Good evening, good evening, good evening. Man, the Lord is talking. I see that so many of us Christian YouTubers are being inspired to talk about what is happening in pop culture, especially among the Black community. I was listening to Cocktails with Catrice earlier, who is a YouTuber that talks about basically the hot mess that is going on in churches. Why? Because so many people experience church hurt because of the foul behavior of so-called church leaders, and it needs to be exposed and called out. So that's what her channel is about. And I also see that another lady that I listened to also has posted about these controversial allegations about some of your favorite pop culture icons and actors and your religious figures. And I say your because I have never been a fan of any of the people that are in the mix in these conversations about abuse and just the nasty situations that they have been involved in. But I have prayed for and I grieve for the innocent young men and women who were taken advantage of by people who are involved in an in a system that is so evil that it is just beyond words. Listen, I was raised a Baptist in the South. We don't do devil stuff, okay? <laughs> we don't do devil stuff. You know, although I have done research I understand what some people do, but I feel I do not fully understand the extent of people who do devil stuff and I, and I don't even want to, right? I get the picture. I get the gist. So today, this is Saturday evening. It's about 7.39 p.m. Central Time. The big news of the day is actor Christian Keys, who came out, he did an Instagram live And I mean, this brother was emotional and just broken, recounting sexual harassment that happened to him years ago. I think he said around 2008. And he chastised himself for not saying anything sooner, for not being brave enough to hit the man who was trying to uh, harass him for, you know, basically just being quiet about it. But he said it was because he valued his career and did not want this man to get him blackballed. Point number one, when you are so attached to money, your career, a relationship, your children, anything to the point where you will overlook unethical behavior, That's a problem. When you are willing to stay silent because you want to keep the things that you are so attached to, that's a problem. So uh, this actor, Christian Keyes, had gotten to a particular point in his career that he did not want to forfeit by speaking out against this powerful producer because he did not feel people would believe him. He even said, this man has more money. He only had $3,000 in his bank account. Who would people believe? And it is unfortunate that we think truth tellers are those who have more money and resources and material goods. Those are the biggest thieves. But in America, we live in a society where you think that people who are rich automatically are good people and that they tell the truth. How do you think they got all of that? By telling the truth, by being a good Christian, by following the rules, by doing everything the exact right way. So it is so ridiculous that you would rather listen to a false teacher, false pastor, false prophet than a YouTuber with maybe 150 followers giving a prophecy saying that these men are getting ready to fall. You're not going to listen to the prophecy because this person in your eyes is inferior to the person with more money. Money does not equal character. 
Just because a person has money does not mean they are of high moral character. So let me just uh, back up and give you some background about me right quick. You can find me at arhampton.com. But I was starting an academic career. I was an English instructor, college English instructor. But I had aspirations to get my doctorate, to rise high in academia, and be the department chair of something. I was going to be the head of something, director of something. Dr. Hampton, I was going to be in charge. That was my plan. So I started teaching here locally at Philander Smith College in Arkansas. And then I started, and it, this was the Lord basically, putting this desire in me to do more, to have more. And to actually move from Arkansas to Atlanta, I literally sent an unsolicited resume, meaning there was no job posting for an English instructor. I sent my resume to the department chair of the English department at Morehouse College, E. Dolores Stevens, Dr. E. Dolores Stevens. And she called me (laughs) for an interview, right? I had also sent a resume to Clark Atlanta University, so I couldn't believe she called. So I had one cousin in Atlanta, and so my family here really gathered together, you know, gave me money, they, you know, my car gassed up so that I could drive to Atlanta, and actually a friend of mine that I was working with uh, at Alltel, yes, I'm dating myself, she actually drove up with me. So my homegirl and I drove to Atlanta, stayed at my cousin's house because I had gotten a call for an interview from an unsolicited resume to Morehouse College. Lo and behold, I got the job. After I got the offer, I listened to my voicemail and I had also gotten a call from someone at Clark Atlanta University. So that's how I started teaching at Morehouse College for four years. Now, here's the thing. There are a lot of bougie people there who are part of societies, fraternities, sororities, masons, maybe other secret societies that us poor folk do not know about. And so there was definitely a system, right? A hierarchy that a lot of people revered. Dr. Such and Such is over this. Dr. Such and Such is over that. Well, you know, I we don't revere any man. You know, I was taught not to kiss anybody's you know what, not to run up behind people. You know how it is, those of you from the South. We just don't do that. So I began to, I was never caught up in that system, but as an outsider looking in, I saw how these people who felt like they had money moved, things they were willing to do. They were trying to talk to me crazy. And if you've listened to my previous messages, you know that's a trigger for me. I'm not ghetto or ratchet, but I will get right back to you. It is a trigger if you try to talk to me crazy. So I had to stand my ground with parents and with students. And, you know, very quickly the students appreciated that. So they knew I was a straight shooter. I wasn't playing with anybody. All of this stuff that has come out now reminded me of those days when I was in Atlanta because I was calling home telling people, listen, I'm going to marry somebody wealthy and because, you know, I was a size eight and then had my own natural hair, honey. I was fly and fine and I knew it, right? So I was going to be married in these uh, circles of people who had money, who had position, who had influence. I always saw myself as such. Other people always saw me that way. I was intending to get in the mix. In Atlanta, I had a very strong and intense spiritual awakening. Strong and intense spiritual awakening. And without going into much detail, I just felt the need to go all in with God. When I did that, My whole life seemed to have fallen apart. It seems like everything fell apart. 
What I wanted to do, I could not do. I was redirected. And I was redirected in a way so that for years and years and years, people have been talking about me. I mean, like, what happened to her? What happened to you? I thought you were going to do this. I thought you were going to do that. And for years and years and years, I've been like, Jesus, I thought I was going to do that. What are you doing to me? What have you done to me? You got me out here looking shank. Years and years and years financial struggle. Try to get my doctorate. I've been in and out of doctoral programs. I just could not do it. In and out of churches because I did not understand that the devil likes to go to church. His demons like to go to church. And so I thought it was me. It was just so much over years and years and years. And now I am at a particular age. And I'm like, well, Lord, I guess you decided not to do it. All of these things that I thought I was going to do younger. And he was like, I don't know who told you that. (laughs) Your latter will be greater than your former. Have you not read my Bible? And so with all of this stuff coming out about Sean Combs and Tyler Perry and T.D. Jakes and all of these accusations, I was reminded of that because I got a revelation because I used to mourn the fact that I left Atlanta and came back home. I was grieving over the career that I thought I lost, that I thought God had taken from me, the marriage I was supposed to have. And so just in a small voice, it came to me and and it said, those were all systems, church, the college where I was trying to make my career. And it came to me, if you had done what you wanted to do then, you would have been caught in those systems. And the temptation for you in those systems would have been high because you would have been surrounded about other people, surrounded by other people who were also participating in those systems. And so you would have been willing to do whatever you needed to do to keep what you had gained through those systems. I was like, wow, wow. Sometimes you don't know yourself like you think you know yourself. So what has happened over all of these years? Because I finally got to the point where I was like, you know what, Lord, I'm so through. I'm tired of talking about money, stressing about money. You know I need money. Now, in all of these years, I've never been evicted. Been close, but never been evicted. Never been homeless. Always have kept my car. But it's just been bit by bit by bit. My finances have just been, I'll say streamlined, extremely streamlined. And so the revelation came to me, you have more discipline now. It takes personal discipline when you have just a little bit of money to do the right thing with the little bit of money that you have. If you make a lot of money, you're going to make a lot of wrong decisions if you do not have personal discipline. If you do not have spiritual discipline, you will get caught up in all kinds of schemes, all kinds of systems where they do all kinds of stuff. And this is what we're seeing now in the music industry in the TV and film industry, in religious sectors. There are so many systems and collections of people who now not so secretly do all kinds of nasty things to keep their power, to keep their status, to keep their money. So now I am not moved or persuaded by money. If someone were to tell me, listen, I'll give you a million dollars right now if you were to do this, this, and that, I would say whatever. If I became a millionaire overnight, my response would be, it's about time, Lord, thank you. I would not feel the need to rush out and buy a car, buy a house, flex, show people what the Lord did for me, all of y'all who talked about me and put your mouth on me, blah, blah, blah. It's not in my system to do that. That's what I mean by developing discipline personal discipline, spiritual discipline. So now when my millions come, I know exactly what to do with it. 
in all of this time for the past 13 years, and actually a little bit longer than that, I have been building a business bit by bit by bit. Do you know the tenacity and perseverance you have to have to keep up with something for 13 plus years and you have not seen the fruit of your labor? You have not seen the benefit. You have not seen the big payday, but you still have faith that you will. And so you keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. So that is what has been wrought within me. So material gain, I have a different perspective on it. It is necessary because it is what we need to live in this world. Having a good amount of material gain also gives you access and influence. It gives you a certain level of freedom from the systems that Jesus saved me from and that has saved a lot of you from. Let me also say that I personally would not have been tempted to do something unethical to keep whatever I gained, but what if I had gotten married while I was under that mindset when I was younger, when I was pursuing everything I wanted as far as career and relationships? What if I had married a man who was fully indoctrinated into that system? Then I would have felt pressure because I was connected by covenant with someone who would move in a particular way that would allow him to keep what he had gained in that system. So basically it would have been peer pressure, but it would have been marital pressure if I had pursued relationships while I was in that mindset. So also your views on relationships change. If you just give it to God, if you do not try to go off in your own way and make things happen, if you receive it from God, instead of trying to make it happen, then you'll receive the best. And you'll also avoid a lot of drama. That system comes with drama. As a matter of fact, I want you to understand that Jesus worked outside of the system. He went to the temples to teach, but he was mainly in the streets with the people. You get what I'm saying? The Pharisees in the church, the church folk were against Jesus because he was disrupting their system. And that is how we are supposed to be at this particular time. Now with me personally, I was falling out with churches and I spent many years not going to church. Even right now, I'm in between churches because in this day and time, you can't just connect and make covenant with any old body. You can't just go to a church and join yourself to them because you you need to know what's really happening with these people. It's just like getting married to someone. You have to be very careful about who you get married to. Because we're in a time of such deception and such sheep's, I mean, wolves in sheep's clothing that it's getting a little bit more difficult to discern between what's right and almost right. See, we know the difference between right and wrong. What's the difference between what's reasonable and what's the right thing to really do? There are these gray areas that even the strongest Christians are getting caught up into. Listen, when the Bible said that even the elect can get deceived, this is that time when men will become lovers of themselves. This is nothing new. So what is surprising to me is that people are surprised and unwilling to believe the victims and the accusers who are exposing these people who have been involved in these systems for so long. The young lady who uh, exposed Puff Daddy, Uh, we don't know if that's true. She's got proof. We don't know if they did that. Yeah, you do. And on my YouTube uh, thumbnail, it says, you know what it is, Matthew 4 and 9. This stuff has always been true. It's just that now, thankfully, people have been emboldened to just come out and start talking about it. Why? Because that whole strike with the Hollywood system, they got a feeling of what it is to be broke. So it's like, well, listen, I might as well go ahead and talk about it now. 
There are not any big blockbuster movies being made. I'm not in fear of my career tanking at this particular point because it doesn't, you know, everybody's career is in the, we don't know what's going to happen. It's volatile now. So I might as well start talking now. I might as well go ahead and tell my story. So you see a lot of this. So a lot of people, back to Christian Keys, have been degrading this man. A lot of black women have been degrading this man, dragging him all in the comments. Why are you saying this now? Why are you not telling the names? Uh, You're just trying to get some money. Black women are saying all sorts of hateful things. And this is what Catrice uh, said, and I do agree with it. She said, a lot of these women who have so much viciousness towards this man's story are probably women who themselves were taken advantage of, touched inappropriately, but they were told to just suck it up, go wash it off, don't say anything about it. It is what it is. What did you do to make this person do this to you? So there is a lot of accusation that a lot of Black women are dealing with and a lot of self-hatred because of situations where they were taken advantage of sexually and nobody came to their rescue. And so now a lot of these women have no empathy or sympathy towards anybody else who comes out and tells a story that sounds similar to theirs. And it is unfortunate, uh, but I do believe that that is the truth of it. These people who are so vicious against this man are more than likely those who were victims themselves. And it's unfortunate, but that uh, saying that goes, hurt people, hurt people, is unfortunately true. So now, Matthew 4 and 9, let's put some Bible on it, as I always do. This is from the New Living Translation of the Bible. And of course, this is from the temptation of Christ when Satan took Jesus up to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, he said to Jesus, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. A lot of this man-on-man sexual activity is not just for self-gratification, but displays of power. If I can make you subject yourself to me in the most foul ways, that means you have given over your personal power to this person. You are in fact in such an obsequious position that you are in a position of worship towards this person who has enacted this power over you. So they brought in a lot of young men, unfortunately, young men who couldn't fight back, young men who made these deals and couldn't go back to their neighborhoods and say, oh, I didn't take that record deal because they took me to a party and wanted me to do this and do that and I wasn't comfortable with it. They couldn't go back to their hometowns and say, well, I was in this movie, but now I'm not in this movie because they were trying to do this, this, blah, 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 right? So unfortunately, these young men were put in compromising positions where they felt like they could not fight back or that their careers would suffer. And because a lot of people were attached to them and depending on them and looking up to them, they went ahead and did what they had to do. That's the unfortunate part because the devil does not play fair. He preys on the weak and the vulnerable. That's why we hate evil. We hate Satan. We hate all of his emissaries because he's always preying on babies, the weak and the vulnerable who cannot stand up for themselves, who are afraid, who have uh, personalities that are shy and that are, you know, just not bold. Those are the people that suffer the most, the nice people right? The ones who were taught, you know, to be generous and to be loving. Those are the ones who get taken advantage of the most, unfortunately. 
And so this is about bowing down. What are you willing to bow down to? What are you willing to sell your soul? I'm going to say compromise your soul, not sell your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your creativity. What number can you be bought for a particular amount of money? What are you willing to do to keep what you have gained in these systems? And like me growing up, Baptist, where we don't do um, devil stuff, a lot of these young people, men and women, had no clue that this was the other side of their contract. Oh, okay, you signed. Oh, okay, now we need you to bend over now. What? Yeah, we need you to grab your ankles. What? Uh-huh. See, they never present that side up front because you wouldn't have people in this wicked industry if that's what it was. The devil comes as an angel of light. Hey, you're so talented. Oh, we can't wait to sign you. Oh, your family is going to be so proud of you. You're going to be able to buy your mama that car. I know you don't have a father in your house and you're going to be able to help her out. They set these people up with all of these, what they have discerned as weaknesses in this person, holes in your life that they see where they can come in and fill the void with money, with promises of stardom and influence. And I'm going to tell you, some of the young men whose names have been thrown out there, like Brashear Gray, uh, Usher, what's the look, Justin Bieber, YK Osiris, I didn't even know who that was. Soldier Boy, these young men are broken. Christian Keys was absolutely wrecked. He was emotional. He was broken. Broken. These people are not lying. You know it's the truth. You know what it is. You know it is the truth. I don't understand people who idolize other people, but evidently there is a whole population of people who idolize the TD Jakeses of the world and people who, with, who say they have billions of dollars, people with money, power, and influence. We are not supposed to have any idols. And so now that they are being accused of heinous, immoral acts that they actually did, there are people out here who are refusing to believe it. R. Kelly, who will, are willing to still support these fallen idols. And it's going to get worse in 2024 because, listen, I said in messages before, the Lord is done playing with people. Let me put it to you plainly. He's finished playing with people. It's too much. Too many people have been hurt. These people have made a decision and they have decided against God. So God has decided against them. So 2024 is coming in with a bang. Where is that in the Bible? Hebrews 10 and 26, Hebrews chapter 10, 26 verse. Dear friends, this is the New Living Translation of the Bible. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. You know what you're doing is wrong. That That's what that means. If you know you're stealing and you keep stealing, you know it's wrong to steal, but you keep stealing anyway, you're going to get to a point where there is nothing you can do to prevent the punishment that you are going to have to face. That's what that means. There is no longer any sacrifice for sins that will cover these sins. For all of these men who are being accused, They are not going to be able to pay off judges. There's no lawyer they can pay off. There's no money they can give as hush money to the victims. There's no information they can suppress because the Lord has judged against them. It is coming out. And so the wages of sin is death. These people have kept doing this stuff for years and years and years, and they have broken many innocent people, young people, children. And they are getting ready to suffer the consequences. Listen, there are no more Hail Marys that you can say, right? Because you decided. 
Oh, you want to make a last ditch effort to try to come to Jesus? <laughs> At least the thief who was hanging on the cross next to Jesus was sincere. You can't all of a sudden believe in Jesus because you, you're trying to get out of trouble or because you don't want to go to hell. Time out for that. There is no longer any sacrifice that will cover those sins. That should scare you. It should scare you right now into doing the right thing. Yes, God is a loving God, but he is also is not playing with you. He is a holy God. Did you forget about that? He will bring judgment against the unrighteous. If you are not for God, you are against God. You're either on his team or not. Because listen, it came to me. There's enough knowledge about Christ in the world now for people to make a decision. You don't have to try to convince people to believe in Christ. People know who he is. They know they're either going to choose to believe or not. They're either going to choose to live the lifestyle, the narrow way, or they're going to live the broad way. Either or. You're in or you're out. There's no in between. So for all of these carnal Christians telling other people, oh, that you, you're you not going to go to hell for your sin. You're only going to go to hell if you don't believe in Jesus because they are trying to twist the scriptures because they don't want to stop sleeping with married women. They don't want to quit doing all of the nasty stuff that they're doing. We serve a holy God. So you better hurry up and make a decision. You either in or you out. And so a lot of these men have chosen to be out. And so now God is, has made a decision against them. And that's what we're seeing. And so I'm rejoicing. I'm like, Lord, it's about time. Who else is about to be exposed? Because too many people have been hurt. And so many vicious people who are like, well, you're not supposed to be believing in the past. Anyway, you're supposed to be following Christ. As I said in my last message, we are supposed to be able to trust men and women who set themselves up as messengers of God, as vessels of God. Don't give me that. Well, we all sin. You're supposed to be better. In my last message, I, I showed you that scripture that says, listen, everybody should not be a teacher. You should not cover the platform. You should not want to be a pastor or a prophet because you will be judged more strongly than anybody else. And we're seeing that happen now. So I'm going to end with this because here's my interesting take on it, because I was reminded of Aaron Magruder and the Boondocks. That young man was a prophet. That young man was seeing things back then that are being revealed now. The boondocks first came on the scene in 2005, highly controversial because they kept using the N-word. I wish they didn't use the N-word so much, but I got to the point where I just could not watch the episodes, you know, too much cursing, too much N-words, but he pointed out some things. It's called satire. When you use humor and creativity to get across a controversial political message, but you can't just straight out say it because people won't receive it. So you put it in a cartoon so that people can laugh at it and they think they're being entertained. Some people will think they're being entertained, but some and more intelligent people will get it and they will understand the satire and they will say, oh, he's really trying to say this about that. Aaron Magruder in the boondocks with the little character Riley told you about these little hip hop dudes carrying purses, wearing skirts and crop tops. What did Jaden Smith do? Come out, not just with a purse, but with whole women's clothes. He was a model for women's clothes. They called it unisex. Oh, granddaddy, this the style, this the style. And we laughed at it and thought it was funny. But I remember thinking back then, he's trying to say something because the whole gayness in the hip hop community was still closeted and undercover. When he did that episode about R. Kelly and the fact that so many people were fighting to protect R. Kelly and just refused that he was doing the nasty stuff that we see now he was actually doing. He was caught on 
Tate and is in jail now for all of this stuff that he was into. He did the episode because a lot of people are thinking the billionaire producer that Christian Keyes was talking about might be Tyler Perry. I am looking at Wikipedia right now about the boondocks that first came out in 2005. It says Tyler Perry was reportedly infuriated by his depiction in the season three episode Pause, which first aired in June 2010. Although he he had he officially has given no response. The episode stars Winston Jerome, a parody of Perry, a closeted cross-dressing cult leader whose love of the Christian faith is a mask for his true sexuality in what the Los Angeles Times described as one of the sharpest public criticisms of Perry. Soon after the episode aired, Perry got in touch with executives at Turner Broadcasting and complained loudly about the episode, threatening to rethink his relationship with the company. Okay, a hit dog will holler. In that episode, did they directly say Tyler Perry? No, but he felt like it was a parody of him. Why would Tyler Perry assume that that episode was about him if something about it was not true. If that was not a true depiction of him, why would he get so upset? I mean, he, meaning if it wasn't true, he would have been like, oh my goodness. Well, I guess it was my turn. You know, I respect Aaron Magruder and his work, but that's definitely not me. No, he got upset to the point where he went to the head honchos to try to get that boy's show removed or to get that episode removed. Basically, I'm not going to do business with you if you keep doing business with him. Why would Tyler Perry do that in 2010 if he didn't feel like something about that episode was talking about him? Go back and look at it. In that year, Time Magazine named the Boondocks as number five out of the 10 most controversial cartoons of all times, because that young man back then was telling the truth. He was revealing things that other people were afraid to say. And he was revealing it through cartoons that people felt like they were just being entertained by. But he was sending a message. Thugs in love. Y'all remember that episode? where the two hip hop rappers were going at each other and threatening to kill each other. And it was because they had been in prison together and they were actually thugs in love. He was sending a message. He was seeing some things in that system, in that community that nobody was talking about because they were too afraid. Everybody was participating in it. If you listen, even if you were not directly active in what they were doing, if you saw it and turned away or didn't say anything, like all of those people who said they knew R. Kelly was doing this to these young girls and probably some young boys, but they just didn't say anything. Then they made a whole lifetime show, Surviving R. Kelly, where they admitted that they were bringing young girls to him. They knew these parents were selling their daughters out to R. Kelly, but they participated in it. They were complicit. They were in on it too. So I just want to give a shout out to Brother Aaron Magruder, who was a prophet 18 years ago. 2005 is when he started. 2010, 13 years ago is when it went off the air. The stuff he was revealing is coming out now. And we see that it is true. Now, let me say this. Why are the schools trying to take out all of the creativity? They're trying to take out the art programs, visual arts, the music, the writing, They're trying to focus on engineering and STEM. Everybody does not have a scientific mind. I'm a creative person. I was in the band. I was on a journalism team. That's what I like to do. 
chemistry and science were never my strong suits. It's not what I'm interested in. When you stop people from being creative, you stop them from being able to tell truth to power in inventive ways like satire through a cartoon. When you strip the creativity from kids, they are no longer critical thinkers. They are cogs in a wheel. They are worker bees. They are, they're only able to do what they are told. They're not able to think beyond what you tell them. And this is what certain political parties want. This is what people in these systems, whether they're black, white, or other, people who are in these systems of power don't want people to be able to expose them and tell the truth. They do not want people to use their creativity to be able to enlighten people so that they can come out of the matrix and see what really is the truth. That is why creativity, the arts are still so important. See, it's just not these systems. This loops all the way back around to the educational systems, to the political systems, to all of our systems. These people are willing to sacrifice children, babies, old folks. It doesn't matter in order to try to keep their power. But this is a new uh, heaven and the new earth. This is what Jesus was talking about. These systems are falling. They are no longer working and they will no longer work. It's the new heaven and the new earth. And it's tripping us all out because it's like we've been used to it for so long. What do we do now? People want to try to go back into the matrix, but the whole matrix is shattered. Can't nobody go back in the matrix. Okay. We're all out here living in the truth and the truth is ugly. The truth is painful. The truth hurts, but it is necessary so that when we rebuild the systems, right? Because we still need processes in order to get things done in this earth, but they're being rebuilt on a new basis, on a new foundation that does not include this evil. And this is where we are now. So it's an exciting time. It really is. It's an exciting time for a lot of us who are for real true believers and we see what's happening. But right now, I don't want to take you too far. When it comes to these men that you see on the thumbnail and all of the accusations that they are facing, finally the mask is off. And people can no longer pretend that they don't see what it is. You know what it is. If you keep going to this man's church, I had to throw out two books today that I had by T.D. Jakes. And then I was reminded, listen, when he started back in the 90s, that's when I was listening to him with that uh, woman that art loose. The first, his, the second and the third one, because I missed the first one. He was on point. I went to one of those Woman Thou Art Loose um, sessions uh, when I was living in Georgia, but then I didn't go to any more because I felt like I had gotten, you know, a lot of good information because those women that he had preaching were on point. So that was a time back in the 90s, but I don't know what happened in the church world when 2000 hit, but as of 2001, they got weird. They got more carnal. They started making these air quote business connections with people of the world, making all this money, buying all of these big houses. They're life coaches now, not pastors, but life coaches. They're influencers, all kinds of other words they have been using to describe themselves so that they won't come across as strictly religious figures. We've seen it happen for a long time. And it is so sick. I'm going to end with this. There is a clip going around the internet of some air quote pastor in Ghana. His congregation were filled with women. I predicted this. I said it casually and jokingly. I said, very soon, people are just going to be given sexual demonstrations in the church. And people are just going to sit there and watch it. 
where these nasty jack leg preachers are literally going to give sex demonstrations in the church and people are just going to sit there and watch it. And lo and behold, people have been bringing in sex toys. Why are you in the pulpit with a sex toy? This man in Ghana literally had this woman in front of the church bent over doggy style. He was behind her simulating sex and all the women in the congregation were hooting and hollering like they were being thrilled by this entertained by this so I was like I wasn't even playing I thought I was just playing no this is what people are doing and so next what people will do because this is what cults do you know this is what was happening in Paul's time when he was over there in Rome with the temples of Aphrodite, where they were basically just having group sex with each other. And then these nasty so-called pastors will say, well, because we want to help save marriages, we just want to show married people what they can do in the bedroom to spice it up so that they won't have affairs and so the Christian marriages can stay strong. Oh, yeah, they're going to say some ignorant stuff like that. It's probably already happening. And people... There are people who are willing to sit there under that mess and watch it and just look at it. You got to be crazy. You are out of your mind if you keep supporting this mess. I keep saying nastiness because it is nasty. It is so foul. It is unbelievable. I'm more shocked that people are supporting this than I'm not shocked that this stuff has been happening. It's been happening. Listen, it's been since time immemorial. The the man's heart, listen, the human heart is wicked. Men and women have always come up with wicked, nasty stuff historically. This is nothing new. But what's shocking is that more people are just willing to accept it. Instead of stand up against it, that's what I'm shocked about, that people are actually still supporting these people in these systems, even when the truth is right there in their faces. So, okay, that's my take on it. Yes, Aaron Magruder tried to tell y'all, I'm sure he feels vindicated just like Jaguar Wright feels vindicated. People try to make her seem crazy. This is what they do. People who tell the truth, they try to discredit them by saying, oh, they're poor. They don't make enough enough money. Oh, they're crazy. Kanye West has had another episode. I wish he could be more cogent with his thoughts, but you know, he's thinking so fast and it's coming out of his mouth and it's sounding crazy, but he is also trying to express himself about the things that he has had to endure in the music industry as well. Things that were presented to him that he was unwilling to participate in. So they branded him as crazy. He said they made him the face of being bipolar. And he said, well, he should be getting paid for that because they sold more prescriptions under the guise of him being bipolar and basically telling the people, if you are experiencing this, then you should get this medication. And he said, they they owe me a check. No, he's not crazy. He's creative. We know that. But then this stuff that has been going on for so long will begin to chip away at even the strongest people because it is so difficult to get support when you are trying to tell people these things and they are not believing you. Well, now the truth is coming out. The Lord is making a way for the truth to come out and for the ones who are telling the truth to be protected. Listen, time is out. You know how in movies they depict evil as winning? You know, like the demons always beat up or eat up the good people. People who are are up, God, you know, get shot or stabbed or something. It's like, oh, well, he's going to go to heaven. What came to me is, because I said, Lord, listen, ain't nobody trying to be a martyr. He said, I don't need any more martyrs. That's been done. I do need fighters. I need soldiers who are willing to do what it takes to stand against evil. Go read Ephesians 6. So just like the kingdom of darkness has power, the Lord is like, where do you think they got it from? The Lord is the source of all power. 
The power is neutral. The spiritual power is neutral. It's just how you decide to use it and how you decide to access it. People are accessing spiritual power illegally, obviously through the male behind. I was joking with my sister and I'm like, why do they think power can be sucked out of a man's behind? Because I heard this other man uh, from Africa giving a testimony about his time in witchcraft. And he said he was also sexually abused by some powerful men. And that's what they did for him over a period of five years. They sequestered him. They assaulted him until he said he found his mind just finally broke. I don't know what kind of power they trying to get out of the male's behind parts. I don't need to know what it is. But evidently, since time immemorial, with these secret societies, with these ritualistic sex practices, that's what they believe, is that they are getting power somehow when they abuse men in this way, especially young men. Oh yeah, we talked about it today. We talked about it today. Everybody else is talking about it. So I was like, let me throw my two cents in the ring and remind people that Aaron Magruder, they gave him such a hard time about his show, The Boondocks, until they eventually just took it off because they say it was controversial. But he was showing us some things that people were unwilling to see. We just laughed it off. People just laughed it off. But now, 18 years later, we see that what he was putting in a cartoon was actually the truth. All right, people, be blessed. Who oh, Lord, this is only the 16th. We just start need to start praying right now. Oh, Lord, help us right now. Because if we think this has been a trip these past three years, these past pandemic years, oh, 2024 is coming in with a bang. For some people, it's going to be good. I'm still expecting good things. But for a lot of people, it's going to be bad. Yeah, they're going to have to pay the pipe. They're going to have to pay the piper. All right, then. Until the next time.